Hi Just Angie family, you're watching Just Angie. Welcome to the Sunday Sermon and the topic today we are going to be talking about with my lovely panel is getting back on track and the, the reading comes from Luke 1 17 and it says and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Um, this, this verse is actually about just the difference in the turning around, yeah, the shift when you, when you get to a, a T-junction maybe, a crossroads, crossroads. Yeah, and, you, and you turn back uh, to, to just face yourself, you face your demons, and then just come back to the path of righteousness. So gentlemen, mm. um, what does this verse say to you? It points to the hand of God just uh, coming with the in you <laughs> and then uh, getting you back to um, uh, the, the path. But also for me, particularly um, at a very intimate level, it, it, it talks to me about um, turning the heart of the fathers mm -hmm. back to, to the, the children. Sense. And uh, it's, 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 I think even for viewers out there, it's, it's a scripture that encourages us if you are not in a situation where you, probably your father has been present in life, it says, you know, God will be your father. Mm. He will come and, you know, walk with you that path. He will also turn around situations where there's been disobedience in the family set up and bring you back uh, on that course. So it's really an encouraging scripture. Uh, especially in a modern society where there is a lot of um, situations in the home front that are not really uh, meaningful to help us, um, you know, get comfortable in the in, in the home space. So it it does come with a lot of comfort in it. Wow, George, what does this verse speak to you? Well, it's one of those verses. I think we know how it is. Beginning of the year, sometimes is January. Join the gym. Mm. <laughs> you know, you new quit burgers, New Year's resolutions. Mm. Then when March comes, you know, like for me, I like to go jogging. Then when the rains come, you're like, okay, I won't <laughs> rain when it's when I won't run when it's raining. And then you never get back, and there's that heaviness feeling of saying, oh, I had all these dreams and you know all these things I thought the year would be. But this is one of those verses that's saying it doesn't matter what has happened in the past. Yes, you had the dreams that you may have fallen off, but there's a way of getting back on track. It doesn't have to be lost forever. It doesn't mean that because I, I took a wrong, a misstep here or there, the case is closed and mm. I can't go back. Mm. There's a way that God can bring us back onto the track where the things that were destined for us, we can mm. still get them, we can mm. still reach through to yeah. them. I think that's what it, it means for me. And for you, Doris? Um, um, just to add on, it's, 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 uh, it's the discovery that you can do it by yourself. You yeah. Know? It's, it's, not by own strength. You don't have to sweat and mm. suffer and wonder how will I get back. Just trust in God and he'll bring you back up. And it's like Max was saying when you look at you and you get <laughs> to that point where you discover I need to shake, then your eyes God opens your eyes and sees mm. there's a family mm. who's looking up to you. Even though yeah. it's not a family, there's someone someone's looking up to you. Mm. So he kind of like re refocuses you, repurposes you. It's like now you what was my initial purpose? Mm. What was I here for? And so you, you kinda like uh, set the reset button. Mm. And then you now go back to mm. doing what you are supposed to be. Yeah. And the second part, just to add on quickly, is uh, when the sons to the fathers is now the young, the, the sons who thought all was lost. That like yeah. now the future is just uh, it's a redeeming bleak. of hope. It's a, exactly, it's yeah. a redeeming of hope because mm. you're like, finally, I can, I don't have to do this by myself. Like mm -hmm. she said, there's a father. Mm. My sorry to say this, but my physical father may have been a letdown, but yeah. I've got the Holy Father mm. who will now guide me in the mm. best way. Yeah. And you know, for me, what sticks out uh, from this verse is the place where it says, the spirit and power of Elijah. I actually mm -hmm. read somewhere that um, Elijah's power and his greatest gift was prayer. Yeah? Yeah. And the spirit and power of Elijah is actually the, the power inherent in prayer. So I just want to maybe hear from you thoughts around uh, prayer and how, does, how, how has prayer impacted uh, getting back on track for you? And anyone can start. Okay, maybe I'll just go first. Uh, for me, prayer is peace. Some of the times, the reason I'm not able to go back is just that there's just so much noise, there's mm. so much happening, there's so much pressure. Everyone is saying, you gotta, you got to make a decision today, you got to do this, you got to do that, and your mind is so clouded, and the one thing you actually you, you covet more than anything is just peace. 
No, you just want to hear that verse, be still and know that I am God. Yeah. And for me, prayer allows me to still my mind, to still my thoughts, to still all the chaos. Mm -hmm. It's a way of inviting the peace of God into my mind. So when I, when I sit down to pray, real prayer, it allows me to access that peace that I cannot get from anywhere else. You know, sometimes if I want to just go watch TV, I'll still be anxious or mm -hmm. frustrated or trying to get back my own way by my own strength, as Dua said. But prayer allows me to access the peace of God. Uh -huh. That's and, how uh, I said. For you, Dua? Um, <laughs> actually, that, that, that point of peace is, is key. But uh, I was going to say, it's, it's, it's you have prayer. Is this, uh, you're, you're talking to... Um, you're, you're getting to share with someone who's got uh, the capability to solve, but not really in a solving way, but to, to comfort you. So yeah. as, as I'm talking to God, it's, you're not really looking for solutions per se. Mm -hmm. You're seeking that comfort, that peace, assurance. you know, yeah. assurance. Like, you know, God, I have no one else to talk to, or rather, I can, and you've, you've yeah. assured me I can come talk to you about mm -hmm. anything. So it's nice to know that you're there. Yeah. You're yeah. always around me. You'll never leave me. You're by my side. You'll never leave me. Mm -hmm. So just that assurance that I can just plug in and speak to you, even though I don't have to speak. Yeah. I can just be silent, mm -hmm. just hear from you. Okay. You download into me, my spirit. And yeah. that, that, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's hard to avoid the word peace in this story because it gives you that peace, just knowing, yeah. like, God, <sighs> yeah. yeah. And I find that when you, when you verbalize, uh, when you're in prayer, when you verbalize anything that you're going through, Somehow you get the the a relief. It's yeah. almost like um, it's yeah. it's half it's half salt, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then just thinking about this first um, makes me wonder. Uh, right now we are all in a position of being close to fathers, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all fathers. We are fathers, and we have definitely been sons. Mm. Um, if you if you were to talk to your younger self, mm. yeah, where you have gotten to now, what what is that thing that you would would, would speak as a word of wisdom to yourself, Maxi? It would actually be just in the same context of uh, prayer, just to not use prayer as a transaction, mm -hmm. but to use prayer as a way to intimacy with God. Um, which I have come to learn much later. I think I got saved when I was 11 at a crusade somewhere wow. in, in that bonky. So I've, I've, I've been saved for a very long time in my life with ups and downs, but being saved nonetheless. But a lot of that time I used also prayer for, for, for what? For transaction. Yeah. For God, I need you to move. Mm. I need you to come through. I need this and I need this. And I think prayer, I've come to learn as I've continued to grow, that it's, it, it's really beyond that. It mm. is... It is it is a time of communion. Mm -hmm. It is a time of intimacy. And if uh, you're going to be intimate with your lover, I think that's a, that's a cherished moment. You know, it's, it's, you want it more and more. You want, you want, and God becomes a lover. You know, he becomes a lover. He becomes a father. He becomes one that you have access to 24-7. You, you, it ceases to be about scheduling it in. Yeah. You know, it, it, it becomes about, um, let's talk. Let's have conversations such that it's not just I need a transaction time. It is, yeah, in the midst of even in church while there is worship, you can segue in prayer moments and mm. a love and a kiss and, mm. and, and just falling in love with Jesus. I, I, I think it sounds spooky or spooky, mm. but I think really I would tell my younger self, take on prayer, not from a religious perspective, but from a place of intimacy, not mm. from a transaction perspective, but from a place of love and flow with God. And that would set a lot of other things in motion. Wow. Um, George? Wow. One thing I'll tell my younger self is, um, whatever you think you're going through at that time is not the most important thing. There's an older gentleman who came and told me, you know, today is, whatever the day it is today, I, and exactly a year ago, what was the thing you're most stressed about? And you probably wouldn't remember that. Mm. So when I was younger, you know, if it was an exam was coming, you know, or if you know, my father caught me doing something and he was coming home, I would be feeling like this is the end of the world. Like I can't, I can't go through this, mm. you know? And sometimes in that state of mind, there's certain decisions you can make that can now have a long lasting impact on you. So just that to tell yourself, whatever you're going through, you will get through it don't have to panic, you don't have to enter into a, a shutdown mode. You know, there are some times, especially when you're young, 
you, you want to shut down. Yeah. Everything that happens, you feel like this is it. You know, the world doesn't understand what I'm going through. I'm about to collapse. But just to understand that because of the God inside of you, the one, great, the one inside of you is greater than the one in the world, that you can persevere, you can push through. So you don't have to then make decisions right then, then you don't have to make emotional decisions. So it's, it's about time and going back to what we said before, be still. Mm. Allowing, having peace in the, in the state of chaos and not allowing that issue to take over completely. I think that's one thing, just even from my own past experiences, because you make, you make the wrong decision sometimes mm. because of that state of, I have to make this work one way or another, I can't allow, you know, just to add this, sometimes I feel failure, like if I fail in this thing, it will define who I am. Yeah. But that's not what it is. It's your identity in God should speak through every situation you're going through. So if you know there's some you know young people, you fail an exam today, and you feel, oh my parents, yeah. how's the society gonna yeah. look at me? I've just yeah. you know this world of failure. I can't you know back to the theme of getting back on track. I can't get back on track because yeah. I've failed this exam. Oh, my marriage is rocky. If you know, I have to do something. I have to, f and that in that effort of trying to fix it by your own strength. Mm -hmm you can make things worse. So that's what I'll tell myself, and, you know, just love, be still. I love what you're saying right mm -hmm. now because it's touching on, um, it's just dropped in my spirit that, you know, so many people are committing suicide because of, or because of that of that kind of um, despondency, yeah? Um, that you're feeling like this is the very, it's very- rock bottom. Yeah, yeah. rock bottom, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know some guys say that the bottom breaks and you fall some more. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> you know, you continue it's falling true. and you can't see the end. Mm -hmm. So maybe do as, um, what would you say as a word of encouragement to that person who's really discouraged um, and that person who's really feeling like they're at the end of the rope right now? Wow, it's a, it's a, it's a tough one, man. But uh, before I go into that one of what I can tell that person, let me, let me speak to my younger self and say, bro. Um, <laughs> uh, one thing is uh, don't, do, don't do things in your own strength. As in, growing up, I used to, I, I, I discovered I was doing a lot of things by myself. So that stuck to me and uh, this, I wasn't getting any far. I wasn't going very far rather. So one thing I've learned is don't do things by your own strength. And thankfully I got saved seven or so years ago and I discovered that uh, let God help you. Mm. So that's something I tell my younger self, get saved. Mm. <laughs> but uh, for the person who's committing suicide, that's that, that's, that's that, who wants to, who's feeling that they're at the rock bottom, that is deep, but I'll just say, ah, uh, man, it's a deep question, but because I don't know, I, I don't Imagine it's you um, who's gotten to the very end of your rock, uh, your younger you. I'd, 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 what did I do? I'd, I'd think left, because I've, I've gone down and I can't go down more. I'd think left. So now in the sense that what I mean is, now get out of the way. I mean, I can't go down. I can't go down. Mm -hmm. Now step out. I mean, now, when you step out, you kind of see... You get out of your situation. Exactly. Ah, you, get, you get a new, fresh perspective. A new, fresh perspective and say, okay, now, really, really, I was going this way and I can't go any further. If I step out and let the pressure pass, what am I seeing? Mm. So mm. what does it look like? When you, when you finally step out, you discover that there are many people actually who are there with you, mm. either watching you mm -hmm. silently or mm. maybe they, they were cheering you on, encouraging you to get out, but mm. you couldn't see because mm. the pressure was too much. Mm. Yeah. I think that's what I'd do. Yeah. And, and, and I don't know, I, I think that's what I'd do. <laughs> yeah, and that's a very, very solid, uh, solid um, word of advice. And even insight, yeah? Mm. And maybe uh, any of you who wants to add to what you would say? When, 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 when the going has gotten that tough to the extent that, you know, you, I, I can no longer see the, the future, and there is lots of cases right now where there's, you know, there's people are resorting to suicide. Um, I think um, reaching out is one of the things that would be important to do. However, it is also very difficult for certain individual to reach out. Mm. So I'd also encourage people who are in the lives of individuals, if you see someone is trying to reach out, please mm. do not ignore. I mm. think there is also, uh, it's incumbent upon us to, to, to see if a brother is reaching out and is going through, let us not ignore. You know, that's why I think part of uh, men impacting differently is, is for that. You know, can we work with fellow men? If, if you see a guy is almost at their wit's end, let's step in. Let's step in and walk the, the path with others because at times just reaching out is what someone yeah. cannot do. Yeah. 
Wow. Um, uh, that was definitely not intended, but you are flowing with the spirit. <laughs> <Yes>. um, <laughs> and I'm just thinking that um, at this at this juncture, you know, somebody might be watching um, uh, this particular video and thinking, "Wow, that was that's really spoke to me." And I want I want to give my life to Christ. So, George, would you lead them? In? No, definitely. And and we are all going through things in life, challenging situations, circumstances where we feel like. I can't go any farther. This is, I've reached my end. Yeah. And this is where God comes in. When you reach your end, God wants, that's an opportunity for him to bring you in. Because you're not the first, you're not the first person to reach that end. God wants to walk with you. God has walked with each and every one yeah. of us. We have reached that stage where it was difficult, it was challenging. But God wants to take that burden off us. And I know for people there right now, that those things you're going through, you've been carrying that weight and it's breaking your back. God wants to carry that way for you. This is the opportunity for God wants to release into you. God's glory just wants to come into your situation. He wants to turn it around and he wants to be able to, so that you can have testimonies, to be speaking testimonies into your family's lives, into your generations. He wants to turn it around so that your story can now impact so many other people. Because what you're going through, so many other people are going through. And God wants to use you to impact each and every one of those people. But he's a gentleman. He wants you to invite him. And this is your chance now. There's nobody else here. There's no one else in the room. It's just you and God. Allow him to. He wants to enter into your heart. And all he wants you to say is yes. Mm -hmm. So this is your chance this morning. Say yes to God. Mm -hmm. Say, God, I accept you. Come mm -hmm. into my heart. Mm -hmm. Come into my life right now. Mm -hmm. I release it all to you. I surrender it to you. Mm -hmm. Come and take your place. Come and take the stage. Mm -hmm. God is coming. He is in with you now. Mm. Say yes. Mm. And now you're feeling God coming in. He's impacting you. It's changing. Well done. God is with you now. You're no longer alone. There's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. He is mm -hmm. in with you. He is with you right now. He is with you right now. Mm. He is coming. He's inside with you. You are no longer alone. Mm. Whatever you're going through, there's a light that is now shining. This, mm -hmm. the, Heavens have opened up to you right now. Amen. The glory of God is shining on you. Mm. You are no longer alone. Mm. You are now hearing a new song. There's a new mm. tune that is singing. There's a new song in your mind right now, in your head. Mm. And that is the glory of God. Mm. We welcome you into this family. Mm. And you shall never walk alone. Amen. 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 Wow. Maxine, be close for us. Sure. And Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this Sunday. It's a glorious Sunday. We mm. thank you for the ones who have committed their lives to you this morning. We rejoice with the angels in heaven this morning. We celebrate you, Jesus, for being a loving Jesus, for being a loving son. We celebrate you, God, for being a loving God. And uh, this morning, Lord, O oh God, we pray that, Lord, the situations, the burdens, Lord, O oh God, that have um, that have wrought and that have that have brought so many people down, Father, Lord God, even the ones who have felt helpless, the ones who have felt like they've come to their wits and Lord, oh God, that Lord, today you have lifted the burdens, Father, Lord God, they have come to your, uh, they have come, Lord, oh God, carrying their burdens to your cross, Father, Lord God, and they leave it all there in the cross for you, Lord, oh God. We thank you, Jesus, because Lord, you lift up the burdens. You lift up the burdens, Father. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, oh God, that uh, you also begin a new doing, Lord, in the lives of different individuals, Father. Every single viewer, Lord, oh God, you touch them. You, you, you meet them according to uh, your riches in glory and also according to their needs, Father, Lord God. Wherever they need you, Father, that's where you meet them, Lord, oh God. Perfect that which concerns the different situations that they are going through, Lord, oh God, in their homes, in their marriages, in their families, Father, in their finances, in their workplaces, in their marketplace assignments, Father, in their purpose, in their calling, Lord, oh God. Turn around situations, Father. Mm -hmm. And as they begin to take the steps, Lord, oh God, to get back on track, Father, be, surround them, Lord, oh God. Be at their front, 
be at their side, be at their back, be at their top, be at their bottom. Father, Lord God, surround them fully in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks even for this platform as it continues, Father, to grow. May it continue to have even much more impact, Lord of oh God, to men, to women, to younger ones, to older ones. And even, Lord of oh God, we thank you. May you lift Pastor Angie wherever she is, Father, Lord God. We give you glory for her and we give you glory for this platform. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for being with us um, <laughs> for this Sunday sermon. You have been watching Just Angie. God bless. God bless.